are going to burn a heretic. Huh? We are going to burn a heretic. We're going to burn somebody to death. No. And we're going to find out why people kill and be killed in the name of religion. Yeah? You okay. See the burning people. Is that where the thing the guy talks in came from? It's exactly where that came from. Um, and you'll see on the board here, but we'll talk about them afterwards, uh, actual engravings. So these things are pretty crude, but they equally give you a vivid and horrible idea. I mean, this is a woman. All of these are actual incidents which are described. This is a woman being burnt at the stake who is pregnant, and her womb bursts and the baby comes out and is picked up and thrown back into the flames. How do you know that actually happens? Because, because we have detailed descriptions from several people. Yeah, but are they reliable? Are they reliable? Well, if the same event is described in more or less the same terms by different people, and often different people on opposite sides, right, then I think you can safely assume that it happened. But it's not that reliable. Uh, there are two religious groups. Uh, there are the Protestants and there are the Catholics. And if you if if you are a Catholic, what do you call this person? A witch. N no, a heretic. What does the word? What is a heretic? Different. Different. Great. You. It's you, no, no. It's exactly you. It's somebody who dissents. Who? No, absolutely great. It's somebody who dares to think differently. Me. I was a heretic. Um, I come from a family of heretics. Uh, my family were Quakers, who were the people who were punished at the end of the 17th century because they refused to remove their hats to important people. And, and you're, make, you're making the, exactly the same gesture now by keeping your hat on in class. OK, great. We're understanding it. A heretic is somebody who disagrees, somebody who challenges received opinion. So for Catholics who were controlling England at the time, this person is a heretic. For a Protestant, what are they? What's the other word we use for somebody who sacrifices themselves to death? Terrible. <laughs> Not right now, no brilliant a terror a terror bomber or what would a radical Islamist call them? Um, oh shit! I don't know. And no, there's the other word. sacrifice nearly, but this is the person rather than the act. Martyr. Martyr. Asia's got the right word. They would call them, they would call them martyrs. OK, so if you're a Protestant, these are martyrs, and this is taken from John Fox's Book of Martyrs, right? And, but if you're a Catholic, these people are heretics. And recently, last year, and republished this year, a professor of history at Cambridge wrote a very carefully considered book which said that the burnings worked. Can I ask a question? Okay. Yes, please. What's the difference between... A, um... Protest, but the a Protestant yeah. and a Catholic. A Protestant and Catholic. That's the lesson. OK, that's the lesson. But we'll go down now and do the most horrible thing that a human being can do to another human being. Come on, heretic, yes. <laughs> the reason everybody that's stinking is we put pork fat and um, the actual rind on to give you the sense of what it would have been like with human flesh. OK, ladies and gentlemen, in England, in the middle of the 16th century, that's the time just before Shakespeare um, that you've been studying with Romeo and Juliet, this was done to 500 people. The burnings in England took a long time. In Spain, it was... Oh, God, he's caught fire. Damn. What we were hoping to do was to do a description of a burning in which the fire went out three times. So it's not going to work very well. The sheets caught fire. But the the obviously, obviously. Aren't we really stupid? Yes, there we are. Um, but the real problem in the 16th century was they didn't have gas underneath. In the 16th century, wood... There you are. Now! What's it like being... B ah, now, come on, Henry, come and tell me. What's it like being burned? It hurts. It, hur it hurts. Imagine the whole of your body. What happened to this man was they just got the fire going and the flames came up and singed everything up to his crutch. 
And then the flames went out and he prayed, Lord God Jesus, have mercy upon my soul. And they lit another fire and the fire rose higher and burned up to the waist. And he prayed louder and louder and then it singed his hair and then the fire went out again. This is half an hour. And then he cries, more fire, good people, more fire. And they light a third fire like this. And this is what happened. And I'm quoting, Aisha, you asked me about the description. This is an eyewitness account. Listen. The third fire was kindled a while after, which was more extreme than the other two. In this fire, he prayed with a loud voice, Lord Jesus, have mercy upon me. Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And these were the last words that he was heard to utter. But when he was black in the mouth and his tongue so swollen that he could not speak, look, the flames are going up to the head now, yet his lips, until they were shrunk to the gums, kept moving. And then he knocked his breast with his hands until one of his arms fell off. And then he knocked still with the other whilst the fat, water and blood dropped out at his fingers' ends until, by renewing the fire, his strength was gone and his hand clay fast in knocking to the iron, you can see it there, upon his breast. And then immediately bowing forward, he yielded up his spirit. Thus he was three quarters of an hour in the fire. It's an eyewitness account, and what's the most interesting thing, it is not challenged by the other side. These descriptions are not challenged by the Catholic Party, so that you know, they are reliable. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is what people do in the name of religion. What's the equivalent now to this? When they, like, blow up... Blue, is, is blowing up. The London bombers. What's another incident? Uh, twin towers. The Twin Towers. Burning in England is not abolished until the end of the 18th century, only 200 years ago. They stopped burning for heresy, but they burned women for treason. I mean, the reason they burned women, Jenny, was that the punishment for treason for a man was castration and having your guts pulled out. And that was regarded as being indecent to do to a woman, uh, and the various bits weren't available. So what they did, they burned them alive. OK, shall we go inside now? It's what human beings do to each other. You know, no, human, human beings do this. People flew a plane into the two planes into the twin towers people blew up buses in london you know the 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 irish in the name of the freedom of ireland you know blew up hundreds of english soldiers and english soldiers shot them you know to control them so human beings do these horrible things and what i want to do this morning is to see why to begin to see why and what the impact of religion is. We've, we've had the drama now, OK? Let's get a little boring bit in. What the religion is we're talking about, right? And what the struggles are within it. Now, Aisha, you were asking me these questions. Obviously, you come of an Islamic <coughs> background, don't you? Right. All of these people, the burned and those doing the burning, call themselves Christian, right? And they believe in the Bible. This is my copy of the Bible. Uh, if you look at it, you will see it was given to me as my primary school prize for scripture in 1956. And ladies and gentlemen, I have a confession to make. I won this prize by cheating. <laughs> I, I won my scripture prize oh, by, copy, by copying the key answer from the person next to me. So every time I look at this good book, I think of a bad deed. But has anybody ever looked at the Bible? Yeah. yeah. Great, good. How many divisions of it are they? Um, uh, are there, you know, uh, two, two many. Yes, there's the Old Testament and there's the New Testament. The Old Testament, and we'll talk about this in a moment, is written in Hebrew. And then the New Testament is written in two languages. One is called Aramaic, which is a form of the language of the people in Palestine, and then it's written in Greek. Is it so that all different people, like English people and all, all different people, are able to read it? In fact, quite the opposite. For most of the period of Christian history, the Bible is kept... You're all, some of you are doing Latin. It's kept in Latin exactly so that people couldn't understand it. 
And, and so when it's actually translated into English in the reign of Henry VIII, it is the biggest intellectual event in English history. Suddenly, you can read this stuff for yourself. And it has absolutely revolutionary impact. OK, the Old Testament. Ricky, do you actually know um, whose holy book is the Old Testament? It's a story of which people? The Old Testament. The, who are the, the Jews? It's, uh, yeah, yes, Michael, it's a story of the Jews, yeah. Pardon? But it's mostly, yeah, on that... It's broken up into paragraphs of a certain amount of people are, yeah, on different what... Different stories. Yeah, different stories from everyone else's point of view about it, yeah, of what happened during those times. That's right. In the Bible, the Bible is, is divided into several different books, and each book is divided into chapters, and each chapter is divided into verses. Um, and in the uh, 1700s, somebody who was actually certifiably mad went through the Bible and produced a complete index to every word. Every single so every word. word yeah. Every word, there's an index entry here. So you can find every... It's the act of a madman, but it makes it wonderfully easy if you're trying to find a passage in the Bible. Um, so even madness has got its uses. So the Old Testament is the book of the Jews. What is the God of the Old Testament? Whose God is he? He's the God of the Jews. He's, he's the God of the Jews. Exactly. Wait, so did the Jews believe in Jesus? No. Yeah. Absolutely not. Because they do, the Jews do not... Just one second. The, they, that is why the Jews killed Jesus. Because they do not believe that he is the Messiah. Is it Hebrew, Jewish language? Hebrew is the Hebrew is the Jewish language, which oh, also was Jesus a Jew then. Jesus was a Jew. So they killed him even though he was Jewish. They killed him because he was a heretic. The God of the Old Testament is the God of one people, and what he's shown doing is giving the Jews which land. The Holy Land. The Holy Land. He's shown the, the, the story of the Old <coughs> Testament is of God giving the Jews Israel. That's what the whole dispute now in the Middle East is about. That Jews claim that God gave them Israel, right? And you will find items in today's newspaper go back directly to the Old Testament. OK, so that's the religion of the Old Testament. It's a God of, he's a God of violence, he's a God of vengeance, he's a God who inflicts horrible punishments, you know, stoning for adultery and all this kind of thing. So it's a, it's a violent God. Now, the New Testament is different. The New Testament describes the life of Jesus and its message is totally different. Georgia, what's the message of the New Testament? I don't really know anything about the Bible. I don't believe in it. Well, it's not a question of belief. So you don't have to believe in something to reckon that it's important. I don't believe in communism, but I know it's important. I, I don't have an interest, though. OK, but sorry, it, you are interested in Tudor history. Everybody in Tudor England believed this. Their central belief, the reason that Henry VIII gets rid of Catherine of Aragon and marries Anne Boleyn, is one, he gets the hots for Anne and loses interest in Catherine, but it's also religion. And what Anne Boleyn uses her power to do is to advance the cause of the Protestant religion. You see what I mean? The wonderful soap opera of Tudor England, what's going on under it is religious struggle. OK? OK, yes. well, I, I it, don't have an interest in the Bible. OK, well, but it's also wonderful English. If you listen to President Obama, who has got to be the greatest public speaker now, and you listen to the way he uses language, it comes straight from which... Who, who, who's responsible for the English translation of the Bible that you use in... King James, that's where. King James. It's the King James Bible. And it's this English, it's written at exactly the same time as Shakespeare. And the rhythms and the use of speech are completely the same. So I, I don't believe it, but it's wonderful literature. It inspires <coughs> most of English literature, all the great poems, the great novels. The, a world without religion, you know, unless you know about religion, you know about virtually nothing of human experience, save for the fragment of the last 25 years. Asia comes uh, from a different... Uh, partly, obviously, you're British and, and a citizen, but you also come from a different religious community, don't you? In Bangladesh, how important is religion? Very. Decisions revolve around it. Decisions revolve around it. It's, it's everywhere. What yeah. effect did it have on you and your family? Obviously, there are certain things that you can't do. It's really, really strict. Like, you can't go out without a headscarf. Yeah, you can't eat yeah. pork. 
you can't do certain things, you can't see certain people. Do you still do that now? You can't get married huh? to other people, you can you? Like some of the things you have to do. No, there. I'm not strict, but my mum is. So it produces, in other words, it produces great tensions yeah. within the family. Yeah, it does. Um, religion, you see what I mean, Georgia? I, I'm just trying to illustrate that there are people alive now, very close to us, for whom religion is absolutely central. Obviously, yeah. like, um, the world changes, doesn't it? So, like, obviously, my mum's old-fashioned, so the things that she does, I won't do. Of course obviously, not. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. she yeah. lives in a different time than me. She's from a different time. In, you could say, if I don't want to be rude, she's from the Middle Ages. Yeah. I mean, she, in other words, her patterns of belief will be very similar, probably, to the sort of people we're talking about there. You see what I mean? In the same way, right, let's just quickly get this idea. When we began talking about gangland culture and Anglo-Saxon culture, we decided they were pretty similar, really. In the same way, the world of the opening of Romeo and Juliet, that gang warfare, is very similar again. So different value sets can survive right through time. Do you see what I mean? So, so the, the importance of religion in the Islamic world is huge. Which Christian country, or nominally Christian country, is religion also hugely important America. in? America. America is in many ways still the driving force of American politics. The great split in American politics between Democrats and Republicans is on the whole Republicans passionately religious, Democrats not. I mean, to be really crude about it, but that's, that's the great divide. So even a country as modern, as advanced as America, religion, for much of the population, is the absolute driver. So in the New Testament, it's very much the opposite. The message is, violence is wrong. He who lives by the sword shall die by the sword. The New Testament, then, does not believe in violence. The New Testament talks about turning the other cheek. The New Testament talks about love, not force. It's a very, very different view of religion. Now, if you look at that religion, how on earth could you do that to anybody? Yeah. Really quickly, and I'm going to say as well, but you said about like, um, you could, like religion can control the mind. That's just the point about what you said, and that like you're not allowed to eat pork. And I know my dad's married to a, um, a Sikh woman, and there's so much stuff they're not allowed to do, and they are allowed to do, and there's so much religion. It's like this one person back in the day. I, this is the way I feel about it. But it's what this one is person has made this up. This yes, is the way I feel they about are it. rules. And now, and now, so many millions and millions of people abide by these rules every single day of their lives. But one fellow made it up. Well, let, let's assume that that fellow was inspired by God just for the sake of the argument, OK? But you're right. Religion is a set of rules, OK? And what was I, what have, what's the whole, for heaven's sake, of the arguments we've been having in class been about? It's been about... Rules. Rules, your behaviour. How behaviour helps human <coughs> beings to work together and how it stops them working together. In other words, what must have happened to Christianity when you get Christians acting as crusaders, conquering the East, wearing, you know, the Red Cross? But this is a religion which says killing is wrong and he who lives by the sword shall die by the sword. How can a Christian execute another man? It's because... Yeah, the Bible contradicts itself. Yeah? Oh, well, there's an element, Henry, that's good. There is an element of contradiction. But what clearly must have happened... Something changed. Christianity... Well, the, the, the text doesn't. Yeah. Christianity yeah. began... Yeah. Yeah. Right, but who were the first Christians? What social rank were they? The uh, high people. No. Low the, people. The Christians began as the absolute dregs of the Roman Empire. They were the slaves, they were the victims. And then, and they were horribly persecuted. And then, 300 years into the Roman Empire, the emperor converts. Constantine converts to Christianity. At which point, what does Christianity become? Oh, violent. It becomes the religion of a, a violent military empire. He's a high person who's changed it. He's seen, he's seen all right, and all these people are following him, so I could use this. Yeah. I could use That's this absolutely break. right. In other words, religion, relig Christianity then is used as arguably Islam is, you know, under the caliphate with the great conquests uh, of Europe. Religion is used to bind a people together and to create a unity and a passion and a support for a political leadership. But that means that Christianity becomes part of the structure of power, of violence and wealth 
which it had been created to attack. What happened in England was that Christianity, Catholic Christianity, is the religion of the king and the power elite. The moment somebody challenges that is different, in Kwame's words, the moment somebody challenges that, what happens to them? Get they get burned. And what is it about that person that makes them do it? I mean, uh, you, Henry, found your, your hand went to the flame, right? Yeah. You found what the pain is. When they were being interrogated, their hands were regularly held to a candle and, you know, just lightly burned, so exactly like you, so that you got a sense of the pain. How could a heretic escape being burned alive? Say so they believes. Exactly. Two words. Okay. They would have had to have said they believed that the bread was the flesh and the, blood, and and the, the wine, wine was the blood. Was the blood. You would actually <laughs> just say that. Protestants didn't believe that. They believed that they were just commemorating the different. event. So, in other words, it was, it was four words that stood between you and that. Can you imagine the choice? Why do people stick with those words? Why do they undergo that death? Because, yeah, they know what they're actually... For what they, was happening, yeah, is actually the truth, yeah, and they're prepared to... In other words, they believe in the truth. Exactly. They yeah. believe they are suffering from the truth. Pardon? They want to be martyrs. They want, well, they, they probably... Some of them did want to be martyrs. Others did it very reluctantly because they believed it was true. <laughs> now, what are we suddenly seeing in that world that we were talking about, of, you know, having a bit of fun, fighting, uh, you know, the, the, the Saxon the uh, Henry VIII's, you know, amazing silk skirt, uh, the, you know, the, the David Beckham touch and all the rest of it, the, the easy come, easy go, the romantic love. What has religion brought in? Faith. Faith. Passion. Passion. Belief. Desire. Commitment. Desire. Yes, actually, the two are very closely related to each other. A lot of, a lot of religious belief comes very near to sex. We've talked about religion as though it's only the possession of those in power. What happens when the government is Catholic and you're a Protestant? If you know you're going to be burned, one choice is to submit. What is the other choice? To die. Stick with what you believe in. Uh, yeah, yeah but, what, but what is the other choice? Do you have to go to the stake quietly? No. What could you do? Just fight back. You can fight back. What then happens is you start fighting religious wars. What I've tried to show you, I'm taking you on a journey through time from that gangland beginning through to it all getting a bit more decorative and lovey-dovey under Henry VIII, to this world now where people get principles. Because what happens in the name of religion is not only that the powerful use it, rebels use it, heretics use it. The whole origin of the Labour Party, the whole origin of, of Latin American protest politics <coughs> is in religion too. OK, everybody, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. Can I also thank you for giving me a really enjoyable lesson. Thank you. Thanks.